Welcome to the Atheist in Recovery podcast, where we talk about finding hope in recovery. And now your host, Dr. Adina Silvestri. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 27 of the Atheists in Recovery podcast. And in this month of January, happy 2020, by the way, I thought I would do a solo episode to get things started. This is going to be the anti-resolution episode because I despise resolutions. So today we're going to talk about five ways to let go of things that no longer serve us. And we're doing that. We're looking to the past in order to inform our future selves. And and we're going to be talking about questions like, who am I? So in order to do that, we need to start looking at things that we want to let go of, as I said, and where we should focus our energies. Because as you know, in order to become the person we want to be, there's some self-reflection there. And so I don't want this to be a motivational speaker episode And I'll do my best to not be too cliche. But it's a question that I get asked so often. It's a question that I think about pretty often as well. And so, you know, this is an atheist podcast. I don't believe that the people that listen to this podcast are very religious. But I do believe that religion or spirituality, especially growing up, gave us this framework of self-identity, whether we stayed with it or we moved away from it and it morphed into something different, it helped us. It helped sort of lay the groundwork for what our morals and our values would soon become. And, you know, that along with our parental influences and caregiver influences had a big impact on us. And so, you know, the goal of personal growth, and this is going to get a little motivational speakery, but, you know, it's to gain that deathbed clarity, you know, why your life is still happening so that you can do something about it. So before you stopped drinking or using drugs, your life probably resembled Groundhog Day. You know, it was wash, rinse, but repeat over and over again, same behaviors, same consequences, even the negatives, and it didn't matter, right? It's what addiction is. And so, you know, we did this We used it, whether it was a process addiction or drugs or alcohol, it had its purpose, right? And it was helpful for you at that time. Now, it's no longer helpful. (laughs) It's not. You've chosen a different path. And so now your life has opened you up. And it's beautiful. It's messy. It's everything in between. But you are present for it. You're here. And so what do you do with it? What do you do with all of this time and energy and new information and what do you do with the feelings yes come on you know what I'm talking about so depending on where you are in your recovery the question of who am I is going to come up and it's this episode I say all of that to say this this episode is my feeble attempt at helping you to start this journey And so I'm going to link to an exercise in the show notes for you to get started. I think it's a pretty cool exercise in it, and it has a lot to do with future telling. Okay, so let's get started. Five things to let go of in recovery. Number one, be vulnerable. Okay, I hate to gender, to use the the gender norms here, but I just finished reading a really good book, and so... (laughs) And so be vulnerable is the thing that we need to focus on. And the things to let go of is that being vulnerable is somehow going to mean that you are weak, that other people are going to see you as weak, that the men and maybe even some of the women in your life will see you as not manly enough, that you violated some man code. Okay. I see this pretty often. And Maybe you are in therapy. Maybe you've decided to take that step, and I congratulate you. It's a very important one. Or maybe you were given the wife or the partner referral, and by that I mean your wife or partner said, you will do this or else. Doesn't matter how you got there. The point is that you are there and you're working on yourself. And this is a critical first step because we can't always see our blind spots. 
It's so important, especially for the men out there. And I know I'm focusing on guys, but, you know, there is this stigma that, you know, it's sort of like a rite of passage that you don't express your emotions and you definitely don't express your emotions to other men. (laughs) I know that in my personal life with the men in my life. I know that in therapy. It's just not something that you do. I even wrote an article for it that I'll link to in the show notes about, you know, about what it means to be a man. And so this is huge. You know, you're probably numbing out from something, right? From grief or from fear or, you know, you are a workaholic and, you know, maybe you were a shopaholic or whatever the thing was, the behavior was, the compulsive behavior, you were hiding from something. And so that's why I feel like in order to figure out how to move forward. Therapy is so important, you guys. Even if you only go a couple times, it'll be a game changer. And if your wife or partner made the referral, they will be more at ease (laughs) with you in general. Uh, I could say a lot more about that, but let's go on to number two. We want to let go of all of the self-blame and anything really negative. And, you know, I've said this before in the podcast and in the community that language is everything. And so, You know, you want to start to rewrite your story. Maybe in the past you felt horrible about yourself and so you decided to numb out with drugs and alcohol. Sure, I get it. Now it's different. You're present with all of the emotions. And so this is an exercise that I have a lot of my guys do and girls (laughs) is to rewrite your story. You know, you're not the same person you were a year ago, five minutes ago, a second ago. You're ever evolving, you're ever changing. And the I am not good enough, that stuff needs to go. (laughs) It's, you know, how is thinking that way serving you? How is it helping you? You know, so get out a pen and paper and start to write, start to focus on your future self, you know, who you want to become. And then you could take parts of that and start to work that into your life. I really like that. I really like that exercise. Okay, three. Three is about letting go of your relationships and commitments. You know, the relationships, then you know the ones, the toxic ones, maybe your drinking buddies from high school. You know, maybe it's your family that just doesn't understand. Maybe it's your friends that think, you know what? You will never, ever find another person to love you again because you're no longer drinking, you know, whatever the messages are, you need to step away and really examine those relationships and figure out, you know, if staying with these people is in your best interest. Are they helping you in recovery? And then the second part of that are the commitments. And the commitments might be, you know, I will never find the right one because I'm unlovable. And so, you know, you're committing to that negative story, you know, those narratives that, you know, that maybe in the past you had said and it felt like it was true. But, you know, ask the people that love you. They are the ones that are going to set you straight. And we'll talk more about commitments at the end of this episode. But I find, too, that, you know, when you make these commitments to yourself, like I will never eat chocolate again or, you know, I'll never pick up a drink again. That's also setting the stage for failure when you don't measure up to those expectations. We'll talk more about that at the end. Okay. Four is impatience. So I added this one in here because I think that in a recovery, especially individuals that are newly recovered, they want their sober life to begin. And so I guess what I mean by that is they want it to be the best life that they've ever had, right? I mean, they've done all these great things. They have have all this new time and energy. And so, you know, when their ego doesn't get on board, that can be tough, you know? So it's kind of like when you're going to a doctor or a therapist or, you know, a helping professional and you want results right away, that's just not going to happen, No, it's definitely this journey of who am I? It's a journey. It's something that you're going to have to just sit with. So sit with the uncomfortable, figure out why it's uncomfortable, and then just keep moving. Okay, number five, let go of the anger and guilt. 
So this is probably out of the five here. I've probably done the most research and have done the most amount of talking on anger and forgiveness. It's such a universal, especially anger, it's such a universal feeling. It's ubiquitous. And sometimes the anger and the guilt, well, really all of the emotions are going to come out once you're in recovery. And so what do you do with that? How do you forgive? And so forgiveness, as I said before, it's about personal power. You're the one seeking forgiveness or the one that is giving it. It's important that you do the work here. You know, you figure out what the root cause is and you start on that process to forgiveness. And, you know, don't let anyone else tell you when it's time to forgive. That's up to you. That's on your timetable. And it'll feel inauthentic if you do it at the time that you're not ready. And, you know, anger is easy. It's the easiest emotion to come up, but it's also the most volatile. And so I would definitely want to sit with that and do some work around that with the hope of letting it go. You know, so we started this conversation about, you know, gaining that deathbed clarity when your life is still happening. And that's that relates to all of these bullet points and especially relates to number five. You you, you won't be able to get through the forgiveness if you don't address the anger or the guilt or the resentment, right? I have a bonus. My bonus bullet point is New Year's resolutions. I want us to let go of them. (laughs) I want everyone to make a solemn promise to not make a New Year's resolution. Why? I just feel like You know, they're commitments that it's sort of like a double-edged sword. You know, if you do it, great. You're doing it for a couple weeks. That's awesome. When you stop doing it, then there's this, this shame or guilt that surrounds it. What other thing is, whether it's food, whether it's alcohol, whether it's shopping or gambling or whatever the thing is. And I feel like disassociation is at the root of all of these compulsive behaviors. You know, the person that says, I don't drink... While they're pouring themselves a whiskey, well, that's a little disassociation there, wouldn't you say? And we all do it. I'll say that I'm not eating such and such while I'm opening a bag of black licorice, which, by the way, is one of my favorite things to eat. Okay, so you're with me, right? No New Year's resolutions. Instead, we want to use our narratives to be the best versions of ourselves, right? So... This time, we're forward thinking. You know, you have no choice but to be you in every situation. You're not hiding with alcohol or drugs or whatever else may have been working for you at the time. We're not hiding anymore. So we're letting go of the past people, the past things, the past commitments. We're setting healthy boundaries. We're letting go of the wrong partners, the wrong jobs, the wrong stories. You know, you pick a partner, you pick a story. So be careful there. And we're finding our people. You know, I want to stick AA into here as well because I think the thing that I hear pretty often on this podcast is that, you know, I started in AA, but it really wasn't for me. That's fine. (laughs) I feel like you have to be ready, you know, for something like AA. And it's not going to be the right fit for everyone, but you have to find your people. You know, whether you link up with the sponsor at AA and never go back, whether you talk to your therapist or friend that's been sober for 30 years and you guys get a men's coffee group going, whatever it is, you have to start talking about the feelings, especially the guys out there. That is just so important. It's okay to talk about your feelings when you're talking to someone that puts you in a power position, you know, but it's a little bit more difficult when it's your wife or your partner or your kids. And that maybe doesn't make any sense in this context, but okay, moving on. So there's no escape route. You have to find your people and you'll find them when you go looking. And so I hope that you enjoyed five things to let go of in recovery this 2020. And I want to finish with some of your people maybe in our private Facebook group. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but I invite you to give it a shot to join and you, I will link to that also in our show notes. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to the Atheists in Recovery podcast. For more great info and to stay up to date, head over to atheistsinrecovery.com.